it's my first time to Dublin. I felt uh, very welcomed here, so th thank you. Uh, first time at Web Summit, too. Um, so, you know, Nico talked a lot about, you know, personal security. Um, I've been, you know, hacking and looking at the technical problems of security now for probably 20 years. And um, I'm coming to the conclusion, working with businesses, that one of the big problems we have is there's a disconnect between the technical people who understand what to do to make a secure business and the leadership of those businesses, the boards, the senior executives, the CEO, which, aren't, which don't understand how technical risk plays into their overall business risk. And so I'm currently on a mission to try to figure out how to make this better. And that's what I want to uh, talk, talk to you about today. So, you know, my background, as I said, I was a hacker as part of this group, The Loft. Um, that's a caricature of me and my compatriot Mudge from The Loft. Um, and um, I was focused on doing code reviews and penetration tests and breaking apart reverse engineering applications, finding their vulnerabilities, and doing this all manually. And about 10 years ago, I decided uh, there's too much software in the world. There's way more developers than there are security folks, so this problem had to be automated. So for the last 10 years, I've been automating the process of finding vulnerabilities in code through uh, reverse engineering the code through an automated process, much like a code review. So we sell our services to a lot of businesses, and it gets me talking to a lot of CISOs at banks, technology companies, and um, I've started to learn along the way how to talk to these people, and I'm hoping I can impart some, some wisdom uh, here to you. So I want to talk about how boards are thinking about cybersecurity, um, even have some survey data on, um, on, on exactly what they're thinking, ask them some questions with the New York Stock Exchange, and then uh, my experience talking to boards and CEOs. So, you know, why are boards concerned about security? Um, it's because they're realizing that they are becoming software companies. You know, Mark Andreessen famously said, you know, software, um, is eating the world. People are saying we're entering a phase of a, a software-based economy. Um, and, you know, we're all here, uh, 20,000 plus strong, to talk a lot mostly about software um, businesses. And any company that's growing, whether it's John Deere making tractors and farm equipment, um, or a insurance company, or a healthcare company, they're all heavily, heavily dependent on software. They're building their own software, they're using SaaS applications, they're buying a lot of software, and now you know, manufacturers are working with the Internet of Things in their factories. So with every piece of software you add to an environment, you're adding to the attack surface, right? You're adding risk because undoubtedly there are vulnerabilities in that software that you have to think about. And so companies are becoming more and more at risk from, uh, from being attacked because they're exposing themselves through the enhanced usage of software. If you look at a company like Target, um, a retail company, obviously uses software to manage uh, its inventory. Um, they have point of sale terminals based on software to ring up your order and take your credit card. But they're turning everything into software. And that is one of the reasons they got breached. They had a vendor management application to manage their different vendors that did provided services for, uh, for Target. Think about how they did this in the old days, right? There's probably someone managing the vendors over the telephone, right, with paper records. Well, that's now a web application. And it's exposed to the internet so the vendors can log into it. Well, it turns out that one of their vendors, an HVAC vendor, was phished credentials stolen, those credentials were then used to log into this web application, and then there was a vulnerability in that application which allowed them to get further into Target's network and cause one of the biggest data breaches, tens of millions of credit card numbers. So you can see how as we expose ourselves through more software, there's more risk, and boards are starting to understand that they're heavily dependent on, on software. Um, and when there's vulnerabilities and there's money to be made, as, as Nico said, if there's data of value somewhere, someone is going to try to steal it. All this software is exposing these businesses to more and, 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 and more risk. And, uh, you know, we see it in the headlines, headlines every day. So, you know, my thesis is to fix this problem, we actually have technology and we know what to do. 
The thing is, we're just not doing it. If you look at a, what happened at Target, they actually had intrusion detection systems. They just didn't have any people um, on staff at the time to do something when the alert came through, right? It's not really a technology problem. It's a problem of businesses not, um, not prioritizing uh, security risk. They don't understand the risk. No one's talking to them properly. So that's one of the problems I want to I wanna solve. So one of the things I did was I did a survey with uh, the New York Stock Exchange, um, partnered with them because they had access to uh, boards of directors. And so did a survey of 200 board members across six different industries. Uh, it was 69% were on multiple boards. So got a good cross section of, of how, how, how these board members were thinking. And uh, the first question we asked them was, who's accountable for, uh, for, for, for cybersecurity? Um, and if, if there's a data breach, who's accountable in your organization? And the number one answer was the CEO. So the boards are already thinking the CEO is responsible. Uh, it's not the chief information security officer. Um, it's, the, it's the CEO. So boards already feel that way. I, I don't know if CEOs know this yet. They might be passing the buck to their CISO and hoping the CISO takes care of everything. But CEOs of every size company have to wake up that they're going to be held responsible um, by their investors and by their customers when, it's, when there's a breach. Number two was the CIO, was the number two answer. And the third answer was the whole senior executive team should be held responsible. So obviously, this is a problem that needs to be dealt with at the top of the organization. The CISO isn't going to be able to solve this themselves if the organization even has a CISO. Maybe it just has a, a security manager. That person is not going to be able to solve the problem. The leadership has to understand the risk, or um, you're going to see a business compromise. 66% um, were less than confident. Uh, about their cybersecurity, so the boards are worried, and, and, and they should be. Then we asked them what their fears were. The number one fear was a hit to the, hit to the brand. Uh, brand damage is something that boards care a lot about because they're sort of the long-term stewards of the brand. CEOs might come and go, but uh, board members usually last for, for a long, long time. Uh, and the brand has a lot of value these days in most companies. Uh, Forrester did a survey um, just this year of the S&P 500 companies um, in the uh, United States and found that 88% of the valuation of those companies was intangibles. It wasn't factories, it wasn't you know, uh, equipment that they had purchased, it was intangibles like brand, reputation, uh, the employees they had, um, intellectual property. Uh, so brand is a big component of the valuation of companies today. It wasn't always like that. Um, back in the 70s, they said it was 15% of the value of companies was, you know, how many factories did you have? How many ships did you have? Um, now it's all those intangibles. So brand damage is, 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 is top of mind today. And of course, breach costs um, is something they care about. Number two, that uh, sort of hits the bottom line. Fines, cleanup costs, paying for people to have new credit cards issued. Um, paying for people to have um, credit, credit reports and uh, identity uh, theft protection. And third was corporate espionage, um, which the more intellectual property a company has, the bigger a problem this is. Think of an oil company that is um, doing offshore, offshore oil and gas exploration and how much that data is worth when they go to, when they go to bid on a, an oil field or gas field. Uh, very, very valuable information um, that has been stolen. Um, there's been evidence of that being stolen in the last five years and used for uh, bidding on oil fields and giving, giving the, the thieves the, the advantage. Um, so that, that's definitely a, a, another factor. On the bottom there, the, uh, the stat is 80% of respondents discuss cybersecurity at most or all boardroom meetings. That was actually a shocker to me. I don't think it has been that way until the last couple of years. Um, but cybersecurity is now on the boardroom agenda. Um, so CEOs, the executive team, the CISO has to start to take advantage of that. Then we asked them about um, how do they want security information presented to them. They want it at a high, high level metrics. They want a few numbers that help them understand what's our risk and what are we doing about it? What's our risk of being compromised? 
Um, they want things at a very high level. It's hard to do. You know, security people have lots of detailed numbers, like how many patches did we deploy this week? Um, that's not really meaningful. Um, and so we have to get better at those high-level metrics and putting them in context. Is, is, is a 72 good or bad, right? Put it in context of, of peer groups and trends. Um, they want high-level strategy descriptions. Um, they want to know what we're doing about uh, data leakage. Like, what are we doing to prevent data leakage of the customer data we have? Um, tell me your, your high-level strategy. Then we ask them, uh, what do they expect from a CISO? Um, so what do they expect from the head of security? And number one, they want a technical expert. They want someone who understands attacks and understands how to prevent them. Uh, but they also want someone who, number two uh, skill was business acumen. They want someone who can understand and translate technical risk into the overall business risk of the company. What will the brand damage be, right? Um, and to make trade-offs between, you know, we could do it more securely, but the product is going to take six months more time to get to market. So that's the potential business risk of being late to market. How do I balance those things? And unless you understand something about business, you can't balance them. And so you need someone who, who can do that. And then the third thing they are looking for is communication skills. And that's because cybersecurity isn't an IT-only problem. It isn't desktop management, right? It's a company-wide problem. People are using SaaS applications. People are building software and sending it to their customers, right? So the, the CISO, if they care about the uh, overall business risk, has to talk to the head of development and, and, and secure that stuff that's being, um, being sold. Has to talk to the line of business managers, like in marketing, that are using all these marketing SaaS apps. Is our customer data going to be safe there, right? Um, it's not just making sure you're scanning your network anymore. It's everything your company is doing in the digital domain. And, you know, this leads into the, the next uh, slide here, which talks about all the risk that's coming external to your business. You're using outsourcers, perhaps, to build your marketing apps and your microsites for, for advertising. Um, you're using lots of SaaS applications today. You're using a ton of open source if you're building applications, right? You need processes that manage all this risk that's coming um, externally, which means you, you need to talk across engineering and all the lines of business. So now I want to talk a little bit about um, talking to the board. Like, actually, what do you talk about, right? So the CISA role is changing. Uh, as I said, it's no longer, uh, no longer just a back office technology wonk. It's a business leader that needs to be with, uh, needs to talk to peers across the entire company, and it's becoming a more, a more visible role. The board, on the other hand, um, is not an ex executive uh, fu function. They're not really um, making the making the day-to-day -day decisions. They're dealing with the highest levels of strategy and business and business risk, and we have to sort of cross these gap, cross that chasm. Um, I was heartened to see, I was doing some research on uh, where do boards look for information about cybersecurity. And there's an association of corporate directors, NACD, and they actually came out with guidance um, um, a, a few months ago. And this is what they said. They said cybersecurity is an enterprise-wide risk management issue. So that's, that's pretty good. They, they're getting it. It has legal in implications. Uh, it, the uh, cybersecurity needs adequate time on the board's agenda. So it has to be covered in board meetings. And they're looking for specific plans to be presented for the board to mitigate risk. So um, you're going to have to start, if you're, if you're a security person, you have to start not thinking about auditing and patching, but communicating um, risk and risk posture, um, thinking, at a, thinking at a much higher level. Um, I talked to some board members, and they want to know the odds that they're going to be breached, and what are you doing to prevent that? That's a very, very big, vague question. So you have to start to break that down into what are the top five risks uh, of the organization? Um, I know as a SaaS company, uh, my top risk is someone wants to steal my customer's data. We're a B2B company. They're probably trying to get into a bank or a manufacturing um, customer of ours. They don't really care about stealing um, 
you know, Veracode's intellectual property. Um, they might, but it's down on the list. They care about getting my customers' data. So knowing that, no, having that threat model means that I understand that that's my highest risk and that's where I need to put the most resources. And those are the, ty those are the levels that the board can understand. And if you can, if you can, if you can talk in their language, they're going to um, feel more confident in what you want to do. Um, they're going to understand what you want to do, and you'll get their backing. You'll get the CEO and the senior management's team backing to take on, to use up more resources, right? Maybe it's going to take more time to get things to market. Maybe it's going to cost more. Um, but unless you get to them to really understand the true risk, and, and that what you're going to do is going to be effective to mitigate that, you're not going to get that buy-in. Um, and I think that's been one of the disconnects. Um, the, the security folks say, hey, you know, I'm I've been asking for all these things. You know, I'm sure there was someone at Target saying, we need more people to, to handle the, the, the alerts from the IDS, and they weren't getting the funding to do that because they weren't describing it at the right level. So in the board meeting, you're probably going to get five to 15 minutes um, if, you, if you're presenting security to the board or your manager's presenting security to the board. Um, and uh, you have to be very concise, right? You have to talk at the highest level. Anything that's more detailed, lots of numbers, put them in an appendix. Um, the board, board members will actually read that stuff, but it won't be covered in the meeting. Um, don't use any technical jargon. Um, don't even really say reverse engineering. Don't say DDoS, say denial of service. Everyone can understand what that means. Um, and speak in analogies like compartmentalization is something people can understand. They understand a submarine is made of compartments, so a breach doesn't take down the whole vessel. They understand, you can understand attack surface. Uh, minimizing attack surface makes it harder for the enemy to, uh, to compromise something. Um, so those kinds of analogies help. Um, and so you, have to, you, ha you can't actually use any technical jargon when you're talking to these people. They're smart, but they have no idea the day-to-day -day things that, that you do. And they want numbers. They're used to dealing with dollars, right, and time. They're used to saying, how much will it cost to mitigate this risk, right? And if you can't speak in numbers, then it's going to be hard for them to put this in perspective with overall corporate risk. So a lot of security people, it's hard for them to speak in numbers, how much the cost, what's the cost uh, avoidance, um, but you, you have to try to do that. And I always ask the question, what, what do you want to get out of your information security program? Uh, just to level set where, where the board is coming from. What is, their, what is their top concerns? Are they completely clueless on the topic? That's a way to really um, understand, understand it. The other important point that I haven't covered yet to uh, make sure they understand is no organization is going to be breach free. Like Nico said, you could do all these things and you're still going to have some of your privacy leaked. Nothing is 100%. Um, the good thing about business risk is even if you're not 100% and you won't be, um, you can have plans in place to deal with the breach. How you respond to the breach will make a huge difference in the brand damage, right? Are you quick to tell your customers about, about, about the problem? Um, were you able to contain the breach so 2,000 customer records got out, not 60 million, right? Those are things you can do when you have good detection and response plans. You can't stop it, but you can really mitigate the problems that happen um, with, a good, with a good security program. So one thing to get the board's attention or to get executives' attention is uh, breaches that have happened um, to peers. We saw when Target was breached, we got a lot of retail customers at Veracode. Um, and th this phenomenon actually hit, hit our company and, and hit me personally when um, one of our uh, sister companies, a company that ha we shared the same investors with in the Boston area called Bit9, uh, got breached uh, about four or five years ago. And the fact that they shared board members with that company and our company I wasn't going to let this go to waste, right? And I used that. Um, they say never, never let a good breach go to, go to waste, even if, even if it's a, a peer company, because you can use that as a good example and say, you know, they got breached and they are doing these three things. We're only doing two of those things, and I want to do these five. Um, and you can use that as an example of what were they missing and they got breached, because I can tell you when it's, when it's a hot issue and it's in the paper, 
that's the time when people will say, I don't want to be, I don't want to be like that other company. I actually, I literally had a, a CISO from a Fortune 50 company come to Veracode and say, after the, this was the first Sony breach, the one that breached their PlayStation network, uh, my board came to me and say, we don't want to be another Sony. So the CISO took advantage of that and said, well, this is what we have to do to not, to not be another Sony. The other thing is to look at attacks that are very similar, even if it's a different industry. Is it a SaaS company? They're trying to get at you know, customer intellectual property or customer data at that SaaS company. If you're a SaaS company, you can use that example as one uh, to, 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 to resonate with your, uh, with, with, your, with your executive team. And then finally, I want to talk about communicating risk posture. As I said, pick five risks. Pick, pick the five top risks that you think threat model your company, right? We can threat model a piece of software. You can threat, you know, Nico talked about threat modeling your, your personal life. Um, you can threat model an entire company. And you can say, what are the different things our company does? And what is the data that we have? And, and what, are we, what are we at risk for? Are they trying to steal our accounts, you know, from our accounts payable? Are they trying to trick our finance department into issuing... Um, it, issuing fraudulent payments, or are they trying to compromise those workstations? Pretty much every company has that problem, right? Every company that, ha that, that pays their bills. Um, other problems might be, do they want to get into the HR department and steal, uh, steal the, the identities of our employees? Most companies have that problem too. But companies that have customer data, think of a healthcare company, an insurance company, finance company, or a lot of, just a lot of SaaS companies, they have customer data, they might even have their customer's intellectual property. Threat model those things, say what kind of attackers would be stealing our data? Is, is it nation states, right? Nation states are going after Facebook and Google because they want to track dissident activity, right? They want, or they want to track terrorists, right? They're going to be breaking into those organizations. So they have nation state attackers. That's a big problem to have. Alex Stamos the CISO was talking about answering the question, what kind of attackers are going after Facebook? And he said, all of them, right? But not every company has that problem. So you can focus on, is, are there hacktivists looking to embarrass your company? You know, that obviously happened um, with, with Sony, especially with their first breach. Um, are there criminals? Are there nation states? Model the attackers, model what they're after, and then you can think about what am I doing? What is my strategy to lower that risk? What is my strategy once that happens to, um, to, to mitigate the breach and clean it up as fast as possible? And, and then trend those things over time. Do red, yellow, green, trend it on a one to five, and, and show that I'm either getting better with what I'm trying or I'm, or I'm staying the same or it's getting worse. And this is a way that you can explain to high-level managers um, like the CEO, um, like a board, um, that you need the, need the proper... Um, resources. And if you can, benchmark to peers. Peer benchmarking is very valuable because no one wants to be in the third or fourth quartile. That's just going to look like you didn't have reasonable security and your cyber insurance isn't going to pay out. You might get fines from government agencies if you lose customer data. You have to at least have reasonable levels of security and maybe that's all your company needs. You get that by peer benchmarking um, against like organizations. So. Um, if there's an industry you're in, if you're in financial industry, join something like the FSI SAC we have in the States. Um, and uh, though th you can get peer data from those organizations with like companies sharing with each other. Uh, or you can get it from sometimes your SaaS provider. If you have a security provider and an M MSSP, we provide, uh, our service as, uh, we provide our testing as a service. We can benchmark our customers against their peer group anonymously and let them know um, how they're doing. They're programming in Java for, and they're a healthcare company. You have way more vulnerabilities in your code than your peers. That's real data that you can see that you, you need to try to solve that problem or you're going to be seen, seen as negligent. So that's very important. Um, I think I have just a few seconds left uh, for questions, but there's my Twitter and my email up there if anyone wants to contact me. Cool. Awesome. Any questions? Back here. I 
just had a question about um, your views on ISO 27001 and maybe um, uh, using standards as a, as, uh, as a way to uh, protect your business. Yeah, I, 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 I like standards because they allow you to communicate outside of your organization, right? So you can, you can show that you're compliant with the standard to communicate outside. Um, if you have a third party assess you against the standard, it's really good to show customers, regulators, other people that um, you have a good security program. I think it's just a start though. I think that there are specifics to any company um, where you're gonna have more or less risk in certain areas that you're gonna have to build upon something that's a compliance standard like that, uh, but that's a, that's a great starting point. One more question? One more? Okay, thank you very much, Chris. Thanks a lot.